Um, next one is from Brian Lewis. Um, we've been going for about an hour, a little under an hour here. Um, all right. I was wondering how to probably model joints and animations in regard to a typical mold slide action. Um, while mold is closing, the angle of pin that travels on a mold component, um, so a slider on a mold. So if you're not into mold, this might be a little, uh, but on a, on a plastic injection mold, if you need to make a feature from the side on it, then I'm looking for something in my office that has that. Then you have a slider going in and out of it. Um, and how to, how to do that. So, um, how do you do, how do you model that up? So it works with the slider. All right, let me see if I can do this without becoming too, too complicated. So I just want to point out though, that if you do go out to fusion and you do a fusion 360 and you do mold, um, I did a couple of videos, this tutorial right here, I did a plastic injection mold, uh, in this tutorial, um, on this part. Now this part did not have a slider in it, but it might be a good one to watch Brian, if you haven't, haven't watched any of them. Um, so actually to figure out slides in a mold, and this is how I would do it. You would never worry about the movement per se, because the movement is what you're concentrating on is the mold, uh, closing and then everything else will come from that. Let me talk about, let me try to show what I'm talking about. So I'm going to use, um, the top down approach here. So let me just go ahead here and let's draw up something. Let's make this mold 20 by, um, 250. That's, there's a mold plate right there. Um, let's make a midpoint from here to here. So that's the bottom mold plate. Um, right there, let's draw up an insert. I'm going to open up a new sketch on here. This could actually all be done in the same sketch. Let's do it all in one sketch. Edit the first sketch. So there's a bottom mold plate. I'm going to draw up my, uh, my slider from the side view. So here's the slider going over. It's going to have an angle kind of going down like that. And let's just put some dimensions on it, Brian. Make right, this 25. Let's um, create an angle from here to here. That's gonna be where, where when it's closed, right? Uh, that's gonna it's gonna fit that in there. And let's just do 15, and then we probably need some kind of other dimension here, 50. So that's our this side view in bottom. Uh, you know the the the, the cam or the core side sitting the core plate with the slider on it here. And then we're going to have a, uh, we're going to have a mold plate on top of it. Um, so that is going to be, that is going to be probably this actually the same, actually the same as the top one. Uh, so D for dimension, place this dimension up here, make that this, those two the same. Uh, and let's make this and this. Oh. This line, hey, why wouldn't you make, there you go, make that there, and uh, let's just make these two equal lengths right there, and that would probably be sitting, right, that would be sitting right down there in a closed space, let's just close this off here. Um, so the top, what you're seeing up here is the top mold plate. There's the insert that is sliding and there's the bottom plate. And then you have a pin and that's what you're talking about. I think trying to calculate out now that pin would probably be starting up here somewhere coming down to, I'll probably just draw it down to, uh, down to somewhere on this part here, make that uh, parallel to your shotting angle and give that some kind of a, uh, that's going to be some kind of an angle between this 25, maybe. Um, so this closing surface here and this one is the same. Now I know that right now this might seem a little bit confusing,
what I'm trying to do. But if you model, if you draw everything up as it's closed, then in real life, it really will, uh, it really will work. So let me just go ahead and put a link to this one here. Let's try to make it 55. So that will go down a little bit further. So let me now go in and actually utilize this text because somebody right now is like, what the heck are you doing? I'm gonna go ahead and create a new component. I'm gonna call this one slow, left click. I'm gonna call this bottom plate. And hopefully this starts to make sense. For the bottom plate, I'm gonna extrude that one out and I'm gonna use that bottom. This is my bottom plate here. I'm gonna do everything symmetrical. So there is the bottom plate. It's gonna make the sketch go away. So turn that back on. Let's do uh, the insert. So let's right click up here and do new component. And that's gonna be our slider. So we're gonna call that one slider insert, right? And uh, let's extrude that one out. So that's gonna be these two sections here, symmetrical. And normally they're sitting in, it, like they would have like sliders on it and things like that, but I hope that this makes a printable. Then we're gonna do the top serve, the top plate, right click new component and uh, slow left click on that and call that the top plate like that and extrude that out. And for this, we're gonna select these three here, make that symmetrical. So there's the plate kind of going out. And of course, that's gonna be the same, probably the same size as the bottom one. So what we have right now is we have uh, the bottom plate, we have the insert, and we have the top plate. So if we go up here and make this active up here, you can kind of see how we have these sitting. So the slider here can go back and out this way in a closed mold, this surface right here is locking on that insert so it can't open. Now where I think that you, where you, you get to with the point here is that, okay, that's all great, but there's a pin and how, how does that place? Well, that pin is normally cutting right through. That's that line I created right there. So what you could do is you could go ahead and create another component and call that your, your slider pin. And somebody who's doing moles might have something to add to this. For in this operation, I am going to create a new sketch up on the top face here. And I am going to hit P for project and I'm gonna actually borrow uh, that line that is right inside of that sketch there. So if I right click, uh, hold down my cursor here, I should be able to find that sketch line. See that line, hang on. If we, we could also just hide the top plate, I guess. And P for project. There we go. So like that line, so we get that end point there. Turn the top half on again. C for circle and make sure we have a circle on however big we wanted to make that, that slide up in like that, and now I can do a, uh, I could do something like, I could use the sweep command for this. So our profile is the circle, and our path is that pin there, right? Um, and that pin is going down there. Now that pin would normally have a chamfer on it. Um, now what you could go ahead and do is you could actually use that pin to, uh, to cut through all the other plates. So use the combine tool, select the target body as the top plate, and select the tool body would be that pin. I'm gonna say I wanna keep it. It's gonna be a cut, hit okay. So now if I turn everything off except the top plate, you will see that that now have an angled hole through it. That would also, we will do that to, uh, to the remaining part. So we will go in and say another combine and this time we will select our, our insert and the tool body will be our slider pin. Do the same thing keeping it and we would actually do the same one more time to the bottom plate if we wanted to do it right. So the bottom plate, the target or the tool body is our slider and hold that. So what we have now is if I turn my slider pin off is that we kind of have cut with that one all the way through. 
So this is how, with all this on, this is how the mold really would be in a very rough state. <laughs> in, in a really would be. Now, um, if you wanted to kind of start animating things and show things, you could. So we could go to the bottom plate and we could say that we wanted to ground it because one of them has to be ground. And then we could say, all right, let's go ahead here and create a joint. Oh, I will create a built-in user's build joint between the bottom and the top face. Um, actually, let's do a built joint between the top and the pin because they will be stuck together. Then we could go in and do a S built joint between the bottom plate and that top where and instead of making it rigid, we could do a slider. We could select an edge to slide over and uh, and they will now um, that will now slide up. So if I click here, see how that is going out out there. Um, and but when it goes out, you probably want this one to also slide along. Um, that is probably another video, but it can be done with utilizing a motion study. But my point is, Brian, and I hope I haven't lost anybody. Um, my point is that when you're trying to model up a slider, at least in my experience, you're doing it as a um, as the mold is closed to figure everything out and all the other stuff, this moving up and this sliding over. Um, so we could probably do, we do another build as join and we're selecting this to this and we're selecting that as a slide function, right? So this is sliding. So the whole movement now where this is moving up and that should move this one out too, right? And wherever that movement is, um, that will be more for show. And, and for that, I would probably just use a motion study. You could be tempted to use contact sets, but that normally will slow, slow things down. So model it up the way I did it here with the layout sketches to find out where everything should be. And then to, to actually get, you know, the, the live movements uh, in here is, uh, is, is more of, I call, it, I call it show. Was that useful, Brian? I hope that was useful. Um, this is just me trying to answer some of these emails. Thumbs up if you like this. Thumbs down if you don't, that's okay. Um, just trying to add a little bit more, a little bit more value. All right.